play. Oh my god, play. Thanks to Marvel proving that interconnected Sorry cinematic storytelling could not only work, but make billions at the box office, it's led to many other studios rushing to copy their formula, looking to create cinematic universes. That was a good film. I actually, However, it may surprise you enjoyed the King that Kong, Marvel was uh, not the first to do this. Cheesy but good. In the 1930s and 40s, Universal Studios pioneered the concept of cinematic crossovers with their roster of movie monsters long before the modern era of superhero franchises. Although not initially conceived mm -hmm. of as a cinematic universe, universe the idea to have their movie monsters cross over into each other yeah no one no one really watches black and whites anymore when i was younger i watched black and whites uh like up until five-ish or something but not not really many I, I, if i see someone that's black and white i go oh i can't be asked watching that uh so van helsing when that first starts i was in black and white and when i found that out, i was like oh god there's a whole thing in black and white Lucky Van Helsing, it wasn't in black and white. But then he goes, Van Helsing, you murderer! Which is one line I've always loved from that movie. Those films came to fruition after Universal had already spent a decade producing standalone films and sequels for characters such as Dracula, See, the, the Invisible Man, Monster, going back and then was brilliant. So what prompted Universal to all of a sudden decide to start teaming up their movie monsters? Well, according to legend, it's because screenwriter Kurt Siodmak needed a writing job to afford the down payment on a new car he wanted to buy, and jokingly suggested to producer George Wagner that he team up two of Universal's most popular monsters, Frankenstein and the Wolfman as a way to do it. Mm. To his credit, Wagner saw dollar signs and told Siad Mac to buy the cars he had two hours to agree to write the script, thus launching Universal Cinematic Monster Universe. Universal no, seen that Frankenstein film. Meets the Wolfman with other crossovers such as 1944's no one House has. of Frankenstein, I'm sure which saw more. Dracula added to the mix, as well as several ridiculous Abbott and Costello crossovers that saw them meet Frankenstein, the Invisible Man, and the Mummy, before the fad would eventually peter out. Fast forward to the present day and the birth of the MCU whose success would inspire Universal to reboot their very own cinematic universe. Of I, yeah, yeah, when, when the, uh, when Tom Cruise did The Mummy, I actually really liked The Mummy. I thought it was actually a good film. It might not be the best film in the world, but I really liked it. But loads of people hated it. It got trashed. It was really bad. Apparently Tom Cruise, um, like, took loads of, um, liberties with the, the script and, you know, how it's being produced and that sort of thing, and ch he, he changed a lot of things to do with it. Uh, I don't know how true that is, but it feels true, if that makes sense. You didn't like it. Uh, so if you were to give it, if you were to give uh, the Tom Cruise, the mummy um, film, uh, a nine, a, a, an out of ten, I'd give it, put your comments there and let me know. Um... I'd give it an 8 out of 10, 7, 8 out of 10, 3, a 6, okay, 5, a 6, 6 out of 10, 2, that's a bit harsh, a 5, okay, 7, okay, yeah, okay, so what, so average it out, say it's a 6 out of 10, so it's not, it's, it's better than just okay, and it's better than not very good. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I was uh, in the in the Mummy with Tom Cruise. There was a thing where they're walking through the ar uh, archive area, and there's loads of different skulls and stuff. And it was like there were clear Easter eggs to what they were going to uh, be doing with the with the Dark Universe, but they just never did because the first film failed so atrociously, which is a shame because it would have been nice to see. Except with Jack some better Hyde planning, they could have actually beaten Marvel to the punch. In 1999, yeah. Universal rebooted The Mummy for modern audiences. Come on, guys. The Mummy, the Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Epic film. The first one, second one, brilliant. And then it just, after that, they just went downhill. Yeah, Brendan Fraser was still in them, but to be honest, they, they changed the lead actress. It just doesn't feel the same. But the first two will always be great films. Love those films. I want. I think I saw The Mummy four or five times at a cinema when it came out. Imagining 
seeing it as a fun, swashbuckling like adventure featuring plenty of scares, laughs, romance, and revolutionary visual effects. Plus, from top to bottom, everyone is a good guy, with yes. Arnold Vosloo being a particularly frightening villain. The success of the film would not only lead to two sequels and a spin off, launching Dwayne The Rock Johnson's acting career in the process, but also gave Dwayne Universal Johnson. the confidence to begin rebooting their Helsing. films, starting with 2004's Van Helsing, directed by the same man who directed The Mummy, Stephen Summers. Unfortunately, even with Summers at the helm, Van Helsing would fail to replicate the success of The Mummy, and its failure would hinder Universal's ability to do crossovers and also breathe new life. The, the bow and arrow from Van Helsing was a real functioning prop. What, it actually fired arrows? Apparently so. Right, okay. Cool and me interested. The Mummy franchise, which seemed to be on I'm sorry, I loved Van Helsing as a werewolf. Of the Dragon Emperor came out. Here we go again. And while that film was still financially successful, instead of pursuing a fourth That's film, a Universal bad. decided to reboot the series yet again, following the absolutely abysmal and largely forgotten Wolfman from 2010, as they embarked on creating the interconnected cinematic universe. The, there's a Wolfman. They actually did a Wolfman movie in 2010. I had no idea about that. I had that's. I had no idea. I would have actually wanted to see that. That would have been brilliant. Look at this. Is one of the things about the Easter eggs. So that's like a hand from some sort of sea monster thing. So that would be really cool to find out about that. There's loads of these little Easter eggs. I would love to see more about them they could have created in the early 2000s. However, when they made this decision, they were deep into production on Dracula Untold, which was not mm. designed to launch any sort of cinematic right. universe, but instead act as an origin story, which is why the working title for the film was originally Dracula Year Zero. But once Universal decided to proceed with their Year dark zero. universe... See, that was a vampire school. I wanted to see that. Dracula Untold became the unofficial first film, with plans for Luke Evans' Dracula to appear in subsequent films. To make this possible, Universal ordered last-minute reshoots so that the film would end with Dracula appearing in the present day. Universal, though, would downplay Dracula Untold's connection to the series. And yeah, the I, I, yeah, um, I would have wanted to see Dracula too. Dracula 1 was alright, I watched it again a little while ago, I've seen it three or four times now since it came out, it was a good film, um, but the ending, clearly, oh, the ending looks so cool, where the original vampire was a sat down drinking tea in the, uh, the square, watching him as he walks by and sees a reincarnation of his ex-wife, uh, that set up, I, was, I would love to have seen what they were done with the number two, never going to happen, no, it's never going to happen. Yeah, mm, yeah, it might not have been the best film in the world. It was good, though. I enjoyed it, man. And instead publicly announced that The Mummy would be <coughs> the first official entry in the Dark Universe. And to run it, Universal turned to writers Alex Kurtzman, who successfully relaunched Star Trek with J.J. Abrams in 2009, and Chris Morgan, credited with rebooting the Fast and Furious series and turning it into a billion-dollar franchise. The Mummy would be delayed, however, after Kurtzman saw X-Men Days of Future Past. At the mm. time, Kurtzman had finalized his design for The Mummy, and in an effort to make the character more... X-Men Days of Future Past, it was okay. It could have been done a lot better. And... It wasn't great. You know? There's a number of things in it that let it down. So... Yeah relatable gave him a blue skin pigmentation that made him an outcast but after seeing the design for apocalypse at the end of days of future past kurtzman was shocked to see that it was the exact same design he had created for his character and decided wow, to start the weird. script over making the mummy a woman and nixing the skin pigmentation angle to star in the film universal cast one of hollywood's most marketable names tom cruise which set the standard for the other a-listers they intended to cast to portray the rest of their movie monsters except universal didn't see these characters as monsters and in an effort to compete with marvel wanted to reimagine them as scary uh, and sympathetic yeah I was gonna, it, that um morbius became a, an actual uh, a living meme didn't it? it it was so bad it became a meme yeah uh, i've i've tried watching morbius a couple of times there's some bits of morbius that i like um 
but majority of it it's not particularly great um it wasn't a very good film even by my standards so superheroes with nefarious powers and abilities and we'd first get a taste of this with dracula untold following the announcement that yeah, tom cruise would star cool. in the film the next big name added to the cast was russell crowe with the academy award winner slated to play the dual personalities he was a terrible jackal high Mr. Hyde, which um i i i didn't like his accent when he t um and I, I did i The the fact that he didn't really change when he became Hyde uh, was a disappointment. But when you look at it as a, in a practicality aspect, yeah, I mean, would he really change? Um, so I don't know. He wasn't the main part of the film for me. He wasn't the the be all end all of the film. He, yeah, he, yeah. Which would have seen him act as a sort of crap. fury, well, heading up his own version of S.H.I.E.L.D. called Prodigium, a secret organization dedicated to hunting supernatural threats. And like Marvel, Crow's Dr. Jekyll would have assembled much. a team to combat one of those threats. Rounding out the team would have been Javier Bardem as Frankenstein's monster, Angelina Jolie as the Bride of Frankenstein, oh Johnny Depp God. as the Invisible Man, Dwayne Johnson as the Wolfman, and Channing Tatum as Van Helsing, with the idea that Luke Evans' Dracula would join the fold as well. Although with all due yeah, I agree. All of those ideas were terrible. If they'd done any of that, it would have been... All of them would have been fails. That was just bad. With respect to Luke Evans, he seems like the odd man out here amongst this all-star cast of A-listers. Which leads me to believe, had the Dark Universe moved forward, Dracula would have, would have been rebooted and recast. On the topic of A-listers, it's also worth noting that Universal was only able to sign Tom Cruise in exchange for giving up significant creative control on the picture. And That's what you were saying? Yeah, you, call, you did say it? Uh, you said that Tom Cruise took over this production? Yeah, you did? Um... I, I, like I said, I thought it sounded like it was true. So yeah, it was, you're right, it was true. Finding himself unhappy with the script, Cruz would bring in a number of writers to rework it, led by his longtime collaborator, Christopher McQuarrie. Together, they transformed the film into a typical Tom Cruise action vehicle, putting the movie star front and center while diminishing Sofia Boutella's screen time as the mummy. Cruz even rewrote the ending to basically make him the new mummy, giving him all of the mummy's powers and abilities to deploy in the sequel. Not only that, but as a director, Alice Kurtzman was pretty Bit green a, and found himself in over his head. Dick when it came to Cruise, directing really. such large scale action scenes, leading Cruz. Yeah, that, that, it was clear that Cruz saw what they were doing, knew the MCU, and knew there was going to be, and basically wanted to make sure he was guaranteed a front row center. Robert Downey Jr. equivalent of the of their uh, their attempt, um, he was doing it just to self service himself. Was to basically take over the film and micromanage it. For example, Kurtzman Cruise originally planned to shoot yeah, well, the plane crash scene with wires on a rotating. The plane set. crash scene However, was cool. upon Cruz's insistence, Kurtzman was forced to shoot the sequence on the vomit comet, which simulates the illusion of weightlessness. This change led to a grueling shooting process involving 64 takes, which saw several crew members suffering from motion sickness, as Cruz basically ghost directed it along with several other of the film's major action sequences. Unfortunately, what Cruz, McQuarrie, Cruz is Kurtzman, too big. For his own universal good. Universal failed to realize was that um, you know what I I agree in part with what you're saying there. He can be he's, he can be too good for his own benefit, um, but I mean look at Maverick, that was a, a massive massive success, and you're telling me he didn't any, have anything to do with that at all, please. Come on, we know Cruz will have had a huge thing hand in dealing with uh, with Maverick, and that was a massive success. So clearly, he can do it. Clearly, if the if the movie is the right movie, he's going to be successful. So yeah, I'd, I would entrust him. Yeah, it's just a shame on this occasion it didn't work out. So. 
want these movie monsters reimagined as pseudo superheroes, as Marvel and DC had already cornered and flooded that market. Instead, Universal had an opportunity to do something different here and carve out a niche of their own, with a mm. shared universe of terrifying horror films, featuring the most iconic movie monsters of all time. Just prior to the film's release, negative word of mouth began to spread, leading Universal to quickly release a publicity photo featuring the first and only glimpse of what the star-studded Dark Universe cast would look like for their version of Phase 1. And in a sign of how disorganized and mismanaged the Dark Universe was, not only would we subsequently learn that this picture was photoshopped, with none of the cast having actually been together when it was taken, but it was also missing the star of the film no that was way. intended to come out next. That being Angelina Jolie as the Bride of Frankenstein. David... You're glad that, you, glad you, that was... Not, bleh, I can't read. Glad that it was never made. I liked I liked it in magnif uh, ma magnificent man magnificent. <clears throat> I thought she was really good in that. I liked both both of those films. Yeah, but I would agree with you if they were to do that Bride of Frankenstein or whatever. I, I think it would have been trash. To be honest, I think all the all the ideas that they had looked trash. To be honest, and all the people they had to play all the characters were trash. I don't care if they're listeners or not. None of them would have done a good job in any of those films. So, Johnny Depp would have been good. Um, yeah, but he 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 may have been good, but the problem with that was he was going to be the. The problem with that is that he was going to be the Invisible Man. You wouldn't see him. So, would that then be uh, Deadpool two with uh, Brad Pitt, <laughs> in reverse? the writer behind Jurassic Park and various other Spielberg films, would be hired to pen the script, while Bill Condon, director of several Twilight films and the live-action Beauty and the Beast, would be hired to direct. Ironically, Condon previously won an Oscar for writing Gods and Monsters, a film about legendary director James Whale, whose credits included 1935's Bride of Frankenstein. According to Cap, Bride of Frankenstein was going to be a very big, lavish, beautiful, gothic horror I think the Frankenstein the in... Uh, the movie place entirely Van Helsing was really good. 70s, akin to the original Frankenstein movie. Van Helsing was a the really good film. Frankenstein would become sort of inert for 150 years, and then rediscovered and reawakened in the present day, which would have allowed her to then engage with Cruz, Russell Crowe, and the other characters from the Dark Universe. The story was also imagined as a liberation tale about a female monster created for companionship, but who was quite the opposite in mind. Cap's goal was to replicate mm. how the classic films in the genre lent themselves to metaphor, and felt this story terrible. created the yeah. opportunity to explore women's rights in today's Me Too era. The thing is, though, you need to, if you're going to do something with Frankenstein, you need to have just, like, the most epic guy to play Frankenstein. I mean, you're going to have to have someone that's nearly seven foot tall and just huge. You, and you don't have, you don't have to be an A-lister. could be anybody. You know? The great Carly. I was going to say get lost, but I mean, Frankenstein doesn't really talk, it just goes, Rawr. So, and the great Carl Lee goes, Rawr. So, you know what? Actually, <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll give you that one. Yeah, the great Carl Lee might have been, a, would make a really good Frankenstein. <laughs> Also want to explore how the rich elite are trying to extend yeah. their lives and cheat death, using Frankenstein's monster, which would have been played by Javier Bardem, as a mirror for the life extension work that's being researched in Silicon Valley right now. After the mummy failed to captivate audiences at the box office, Universal would pump the brakes on the dark universe. What I really it took you a long time to land from that, didn't is it? They threw up their hands and said, whoa, hold on, hold up. This isn't working out. Let's stop and just think for a year or two. Unfortunately, the mummy in the dark universe seemed snake bit from the start, with mistake after mistake being made along the way. For example, when Universal released the trailer to the film online, they forgot to trailer. add the music and sound effect tracks, leading to an unintentionally hilarious version featuring a screaming Tom Cruise aboard a silent crashing plane. Mm. 
Following this failure, Universal went back real. to making standalone films, wisely teaming with the low-budget uh, horror hit That was a good film. I've seen that. that was the first quite of these good. collaborations was The Invisible Man, which went back to basics and was one of the most frightening horror films in years, proving that the source material for terrifying modern-day reboots is hiding in plain sight. Thanks for watching, every. It wasn't frightening. It was good. It was clever. Wasn't frightening, though. Everybody, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Bullets and Blockbusters nah. for more great content. Gladiator 2. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I'll agree. The Gladiator 2 trailer looks epic. You can't wait. Yeah. It's going to be huge. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree with you. Gladiator 2 looks like it's going to be an incredible film. Absolutely incredible. I can't wait to see it. We'll see the origin plans for Alien 3 with the monks. I haven't got a clue. I have no idea about that. Not a clue.